What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to bring you a brand new video talking about all the brand new season six huge news that we got. Everything from the Mercs, the Citadel, the Undercity, as well as some general quality of life changes. Now, just over the weekend, we had big time creators like Rob and a bunch of other um, Anna Cake, Wuju, and a bunch of other creators go over to Gamescom over in Europe. I was unfortunately not able to go, but big creators big shout out to my boy rob here i'm gonna link his video in his entire interview down in the description below because he got some really juicy details about the upcoming season six and the expansion of vessel of hatred so i'm gonna leave this interview here definitely go check it out um, he's talking to the two uh, devs right here, which is fantastic. But I wanted to bring you just kind of a synopsis or a, you know, just the bullet points of that interview and just relay the information and all the news so we can get it out there to as much of the, of the Diablo community members as we can. So thank you, Rob, for the interview, man. That's so awesome that you were able to do that. So let's get right into it. So first off, before we get into these, I'm sure you're reading them on the channel now. Um, a lot of really great things coming i know it's season five and there's not a whole lot left to do this is a very short season and we're all just kind of waiting till october 8th yes we're all just waiting it's fantastic so with that said there's a lot of great things coming so let's break them down so first we got mercenaries here or the mercs you can have two mercs equipped with one of them at your side and the other one in the reinforcement okay reinforcement is kind of like you're in a party, you're the one that's equipped and follows you goes away. And then there's a reinforcement which you can have the uh, Merc jump out and do whatever skill it's going to do. Key bound to something like your basic attack or, you know, when you freeze an enemy, something like that, which is also really, really nice. Now, they all gain EXP from fighting with you, even if they're just in the reinforcement tab. So if you're or if you're like partied up with your team, you know, you don't have the one following you, even the ones that you have equipped in the reinforcement slot will still gain XP, which is awesome. So that way you're not like penalized from being in a party, which is awesome. So all players in the party can have a reinforcement. So this was a big question asked because in Diablo 3, when you're playing solo, you have the Merc follow you. And then when you join up with somebody, your Merc goes away. This is the same thing that happens in Diablo 4, but because of the reinforcement slot, every player in a party can still use and equip the mercenary in the reinforcement slot. And all those mercenaries will still trigger just like whatever you have it bound to, even though you're in a four man party, two man party, three man party, which I think is really great. Um, however, one thing that was interesting was that the mercenaries cannot be equipped. So they're just gonna be, you know, geared up to whatever the, their gills are or gills gear is but everything is going to be based on the skills for the mercenary so it's going to be very important that we use and like really identify some of their skills to assist us which is why the mercs give crazy buffs to players everything is going to be based on their skills so just like in diablo 3 you where you had four skills for the mercs these are much bigger skills so let me go find a tab for you real quick and we're back so these skills you have these big huge skill trees here and the mercenaries are going to be able to you know everything and all their power is going to come from these skills that are really going to benefit you as a player so it's very important that you we kind of learn these and figure out what's going to be best to support you and what you're doing with your builds and classes in season six now um back over here so it doesn't cost anything to hire the mercenaries i think that's very important i think that's great it's free just like it was in diablo 3 which is huge you know i didn't want there i was hoping that nothing like that was going to happen where it cost a crap ton of gold to hire them and swap them out and vice versa etc um one other unique thing is that they can be uh the mercenaries can die and they can be revived by a player so when you're looking at some of these mercenaries and they're fighting um they can just die and take a knee which is cool so they just kind of kneel down in the field is what the developer said and you can, you know, like you can run over there and revive them as if you would a fellow person that you're playing with to revive them faster. But from what it looks like, it's going to take about 45 seconds on a cooldown for them to come back to life at this time because there's no gear pieces that we can add similar to Diablo 3 where you can make a mercenary or follower unkillable. There's nothing like that. So, but I'm assuming that there is going to be ways to really 
kind of help negate this or lower this cooldown, which I think is cool. They can be revived by a player, which is awesome. The Merc by your side has to be different than the one in Reinforcement. So the Merc that you have following you is one that you hire, and then the Merc that you have in the Reinforcement slot is also going to be a different one that you can hire. You can never have two of the same Mercenaries in the two spots. They have to be different, which I thought was kind of cool because now you're going to have all these different Mercs that you can hire and kind of pick and choose from and really benefit from all of their abilities to complement your character as a whole. So I think that was really cool. Um, one big thing, which I hope this doesn't happen just like with the, uh, you know, in the past in season three, uh, where the uh, mercs don't count as minions or companions for all druids, necromancers, or any builds like sorceress that would give buffs or get bonuses for having more multiple minions, companions, conjurations, etc. That does not count with mercs, so no additions there. Now, let's get into the citadel here. Because the Citadel is probably one of the biggest things that I'm most excited about here is the Dark Citadel coming to Season 6. This is by far, they call it a dungeon, but we all know that this is a raid. So this is the biggest addition here. We only got a little bit of information uh, for this. Everything else for this is going to come from the Campfire Chat, which we're going to get here this Thursday at 11 a.m. PDT. Um, and it gives a preview of the public test realm that we're going to be able to access, which is fantastic. I love that the devs keep giving us the um, PTRs for all the players to, you know, kind of test things out and really just polish the game. I think it's great. I really wish we would have got that from earlier seasons, but we're two seasons into this now. So I think the devs understand now that we're going to be doing this for every season. I think that's great. So the Dark Citadel is the brand new raid inside of Diablo 4. It opens in Torment 1 after clearing a pit level 15 to 20. He said 15 to 20, so I'm not exactly sure which pit level you need to uh, defeat in order to unlock it. I'm assuming it'll be 15 at the smallest, 20 at the highest. Maybe they just haven't zoned in, but it's somewhere in there because they believe that the difficulty of the Citadel is going to be somewhere around the pit level 15 to 20 because your character should be relatively geared. You should have some pretty out maxed out stats as far as your defenses, and you should be strong enough to really take this thing on. Um, another thing that's great about the Citadel is you get exclusive transmogs from completing the Citadel, which is great. Um, I think this is a fantastic thing because, you know, it was similar to back when you would defeat Uber Lilith for the very first time. You would get the horse and then you get the skin, you get the icons. I think all of those things are really, really great and something that we should really continue to do to kind of inspire people to go try out new different end game content. So really just so that way they get the full bang for their buck, right? Um, the other thing is, is that the rewards, because this is a huge thing, which we all learned from the... Uh, Infernal Hordes in the PTR was trash, and now in this Season 5, it's actually pretty great. So the Citadel's rewards are based on the difficulty that you're playing the Citadel at, which makes sense. And then they refresh each week, and the refresh is going to be potentially different rewards that you can get from a previous week. And I think that's great because it really incentivizes like, hey, all right, the raid reset on Tuesday is similar to World of Warcraft, you know, or whatever day it resets on. Let's get the clan, let's get the boys, let's get the, the girls, let's go play and defeat the Citadel. Because they did say, I forgot to add this part in the inventory or in the, in the interview, that it can take up to three hours to complete until mechanics are learned. However, this may change. Um, this I, I'm assuming this was just a rough estimate, but it was an interview. I did forget to mention it. But I really did enjoy that it was going to take that long. There's three different wings inside of the Citadel, and each of them have a lot of different mechanics that you're going to have to go through, which is why you are going to need a full party, at least two people at a minimum to do this. But what is a great thing about the Citadel is that um, you, you, can, can, you can save progress. I forgot that was in there. You can save progress, uh, meaning you can, you can leave and come back. So if you're at a point where like, oh man, I defeated wing one, you know, all right, let me take a break. I can save my progress, leave, and then come back hours later and complete the other waves. I think this is awesome. I think that's a great thing to do in a raid, you know, because if it is going to take this long, similar to like raids in Destiny 2, we should be able to just have breaks. Um, there also is going to be vendors, vendors at the Citadel. So you don't have to go back to, uh, um, go back to town. Uh, which I think is great. Uh, that way you can just like purge from any loot and stuff that you are going to get. Um, this may change. I think they just briefly touched on it. I'm just going to assume that this is here. So I'm going to put a question mark next to it. But the Citadel is going to be awesome. 
Now, the Undercity, which is the brand new dungeon mechanic that I think is going to be really, really cool. The Undercity is the brand new way that you can like level up your character is getting into the underbelly here of, of the uh, Undercity. So this unlocks at level 15, which is similar to how when you get your class specific um, specializations. So it unlocks at 15 um, and then you can start doing it. Okay. There's going to be a timer that ticks down. Um, and when it hits zero, you're kicked out of the dungeon. Killing elites and certain other monsters will extend the timer. It looks, it's similar to like, um, you know, kind of how the pit is now, but the timer should be different. It should be better than what the gauntlet was or the pit currently is so i'm very excited about that but this is going to be one of the main ways that you're going to be able to level up your character and not only that you're going to be able to get some really cool rewards for it um next is that because this is available in world tier one we all know that whispers can start and the hell ties are there but now nightmare dungeons are actually coming to world tier one which i think is an amazing thing um if you really want to just start popping off on the nightmare dungeons and just running them i think that's great for uh experience just keep in mind that in world tier one world tier two um with nightmare dungeons you're not going to be able to do anything with the glyphs um uh until you get to like level 50 unless they change it to where you can find your glyphs early and then you can start leveling them up but again you still wouldn't be able to equip them until your level 50 uh when your paragon board actually unlocks but the devs did say that there was going to be some progression changes coming to next season it's a complete kind of rework so i'm sure that we're going to learn a lot more uh, with that in the ptr campfire this thursday um also you can add mods um, which are called tributes to the undercity runs which means there should be some different modifiers and this is where you're going to be able to kind of target farm some of these items that they spoke about which i think is really really cool so if you're looking for i want to play incinerate and you can kind of target farm certain you know gear or maybe powers i think that would be really really cool to get people jump started on a build um now again just like with the citadel everything is going to scale with the level in the world level as it does with the pit the monsters and hp and damage etc and resistances continue to go up the higher level that you go um last and not least guys because i don't want the video to be too long is some general quality of life changes so the devs did mention two more character slots for season six, which I think is great. That puts us to 14 total uh, because every single season, I'm, you know, I'm making at least five or six characters, playing them all to 100, making multiple characters for different builds because we can't swap over yet. Um, so I think this is really nice. They did add another tab for the inventory, which if we scroll down here, maybe I can find it. I think it was in, in here somewhere. I think it's in the video that there was an additional tab um, for this, let me go. Let me go pull this up. Maybe I can. Maybe I have it in my screenshots here. Uh, yeah, we have this here. So if you look at this photo here, you have the additional tabs here in your inventory. Looks like you got one for potions and keys, your gear, and then I'm not sure what this one's for. Uh, that looks really cool. I'm not sure. So this is just your character inventory, which I think is great. Um, but more importantly, there is possible chance for increase in stash tabs. Uh, the developers didn't confirm or deny this, but, um, you know, hopefully with a brand new expansion, we would get some. We're currently at, what, six slots. I hope we go to eight slots. That would be nice. Um, I seriously doubt we would get any more than two. But if we at least get one, I guess that's, you know, that's nice. That puts us to seven. But two more stash tabs would be fantastic. And then last but not least, guys, which this is a huge one, is... The armory is coming. The devs did confirm that the armory is coming. They already talked about this in the past, but they just said it's not a, it's not what, you know, it's not a question of is it coming? It's a question of when it's coming. Um, Rob really did highlight and say, well, you know, coming to season six with the expansion would be a perfect time to do it. And the devs just said they didn't really have anything else to say at this time. So maybe we'll get something in the PTR about the armory. But that would be fantastic if they brought this in with the additional character slots because everybody's asking for this. And this is probably the number one ranked thing that the, the community really wants for Diablo 4. So hopefully we get this with the brand new expansion. But yeah, guys, overall, huge news from this interview. Again, I'm going to link Rob's video down in the description below. Shout out to Rob, man. Go check this out. It's great if you really want to hear exactly what the developer said so you can read between the lines feel free but this was just kind of a wrap-up of everything that they kind of went over and what they you know talked about so definitely 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 go check that out 
But yeah, guys, like the video. Let's get this to 100 plus likes. Let's get this out to the community. Share this with everybody. Combat, com, combat. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of all this. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the description. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.